finals. Yeah! <laughs> That's the first noise you hear. <laughs> That's the intro. <laughs> What? <laughs> What's up everybody? I'm Robbie Miles. I'm TJT. And we are here again to give you some more juicy wrestling stuff. <laughs> um, more specifically, more as uh, our old president at our college would say, more specifically, um, we are... Nobody's going to get that but us. It's okay. <laughs> he went to WIU, Jack Thomas. <laughs> He's probably, gonna, he's probably gonna hate us now. Um, if it didn't already. <laughs> we're here today to talk to you guys about the recap of what happened last night on WWE TLC, the SmackDown is pay-per-view. Um, yeah, they still call it pay-per-view. I guess technically it is pay-per-view. You just pay monthly. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's, just, it's like whatever. I think they could Network special is kind of a mouthful. Yeah, but like the because the network specials are like the documentaries of like when Seth Rollins broke his the leg. good stuff yeah the <laughs> <laughs> yes the good things that we're like really excited to watch um, not that the pay per views aren't exciting like but, NXT like, yeah exactly um two oh five you know uh, I tried to watch that but the network was like not having it <laughs> what, I tried what WWE not giving Cruiserweights a chance I again? tried well guys we're gonna go ahead and get started with this bad boy we have mm -hmm. good a good six matches, an actual shut up we're gonna talk about. Um, and I don't. There's no point in talking about the kickoff shut, uh, kickoff match because it was the kickoff match. That's what it was made. But for. we do have one thing to say, and that's leave the Ascension and the Pod villains alone. Let's start a petition. <laughs> <laughs> they have been cruel. They have been abused on that show for too long, I, and they deserve better. They deserve better. Um, <coughs> to me. It kind of leads to my very first match of the night, the tag team championship match. Um, and you know, if you thought it wasn't as bad as them, of course, but if you thought Brock and Bill Goldberg match was a squash at Survivor Series, I felt, in my opinion, that this tag team match was a squash. Like what, five minutes? I don't know. It was my opinion, five minute long match. Just so you all know, this is um. Tag team titles that open the show is uh, tag team champions uh, Heath Slater and Rhino, the Man Beast versus the new Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton with Luke Harper at ringside. Um, I don't know. It's just I think I I think I saw the match and it just went by so quick, it was like five six minutes long. And it shows it shows why they couldn't realistically keep the titles on Beauty and the Man Beast horrible name uh for too long and that's that you know they kind of they have a shtick they have a thing that is you know slater kind of bumps around a bit takes all the damage and then rhino comes in and that's it like that you can't but you can't build like champions you can't build champions out of that you can't have like an actual meaningful real title reign just on that and this match kind of showed that because uh, the story of the match was that Randy and Bray came to play, and to their credit, the champions also took them very seriously. But they, they just they couldn't they couldn't keep up. Yeah, I have so many feelings about it in general because I think every true WWE fan is fine happy that finally um, Bray Wyatt is a champion. Finally, After all what? these years, they trust him to hold a title. However, I'm upset because. It's a title that had that A is a tag team title, so it's like he he's with someone else. And B, I understand like he helped get it that far, but he didn't even make the pin to win the championship. You know, it's just like it's like come on, like Bray is better than that. Like Bray, I think Bray deserves to be a. I think Bray could be a singles champion. Hell, I think Bray could be WWE champion. I think, in my opinion, I think he's ready for that role. I think. Get him, get him in the right rivalry. Get him in those WWE Championship main event matches, in my opinion. But, like like I said, a really happy moment for Bray to win the tag team titles. But just a little upsetting because 
here are two tag teams that are just kind of formed together, which I know this is a, a good taste of what happened in Attitude Era, where like the, some big names would get together and tag team and win the titles and stuff. And it just bothers me because just the match right before the kickoff show was involved a, a ten man tag match with four, um, with four. Eight of those ten. Yeah, eight of those ten are actually tag teams. Well, uh, except for the high pros. Well, yeah, okay, that's true. But like and tech, technically American Alpha, but they've gotten to the but point yeah, it's like, where they're, like, they're tech. It's like one of those things like they came, but that's I think they just they came in, like this they came into the um. The they team. made their main roster. Yeah, as a tag team, you right. know, and I think there we have great tag team. Like it's not even them. We have the Usos. We have uh, it got. The fact they brought him back is surprising, but oh, Spirit yeah. Squad and the Usos um, were like completely off the card. I yeah, didn't even it's, like, that. it's like one of those things. It's like we have great tag teams. Um, I think that can strongly show the tag team division. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like they weren't used. In my opinion, they weren't used properly. Um, but again, but it's like I said, so many mixed feelings about it because I'm happy Bray has a title, but I just hate kind of the. Yeah, going back to what you said about Bray winning a single title, Bray winning the world championship. Honestly, if they had just, if they had committed to him a little bit earlier and they had booked him a little bit better earlier, the match that I would definitely have wanted to see at WrestleMania, WrestleMania is Bray versus AJ. That's a match we've never seen. That's a match no one's really thinking about, but. That's honestly a match that could be fantastic if Bray is built properly as the new, basically as the new Undertaker, basically as this new like supernatural force that it puts a lot of uh, pressure on AJ to try and overcome because they got to turn that guy. Yeah, that's... they they got to turn AJ. Yeah, it's I feel something I feel something mysterious is happening within the Wyatt family, especially with the whole. It's hard ring. to pinpoint where they're going, which yeah. is good. Which is good. I think it's I think it's weird. We're so used to WWE being predictable, and then when they're not, we're so we're so selfish. <laughs> we're so selfish. We get mad like, ew, why is that? Why are why are they so predictable? <laughs> then when they're not predictable. We're like, oh, why well, don't we understand what's going on? You know, that's just what it is. So, um, otherwise, like I said, to me, a very short match. It's a very short match. Yeah. And then the next match was also very short, but I think we all knew that one was going to be short. Yeah, I, I didn't expect that match to be short. Nor though. would we want I mean, that match to be long. Yeah, we did it. Um, the next match was Nikki Bella versus Carmella. I never realized how much that rhymed. Tell me, he didn't just say that. Um, the next matchup was Nikki Bella versus Somebody Carmella. Somebody pull a 2007 Chris Jericho and save me. <laughs> <laughs> and they faced off in a no disqualification match, which, um, like I said, I'm glad the match went quicker. I think one of the things that I wanted to point back to your prediction for Survivor Series that by Nikki Bella, which I agreed. I feel that Nikki Bella was still a diva, and I feel yes. that. But I feel that this matchup, it kind of helped her get a little more a little more aggressive. Just. A little more aggressive to show that she can she can kind of keep up in this. But that's deal. really not that's not why I see her as a diva still. That's not where it really why I see her as a leftover of the past diva generation. The thing is, the thing about it is that the only reason Nikki is here, the only reason Nikki is pushed as hard as she is, and trust me, she's on Roman Reigns level of like very subtly being pushed very hard because a lot of people when they see posters and stuff or they see advertisements they're like why is Roman Reigns all of, blah, 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 he's all in the center why isn't Kevin in the center um, they're doing the exact same thing with Becky Lynch and Nikki Bella and now we'll get to that but now Alexa Bliss and Nikki Bella they're probably going to do the same thing honestly and the only reason it's happening is because of who she's dating it's not because of what she offers in the ring. Now, if they want to fix that, then they got to show Nikki actually having, like, good matches. And Nikki herself actually has to have good matches. And the way that they could possibly be um, fixed, remedying that already is they may have a program with her and Natalia, uh, which... <sighs> can I just... Can I... I, there's so many things wrong. There's so many weird things wrong with what happened after this match. Because, yes, Nikki Bella won. She didn't need to win, but she won anyway. Fine. Okay. 
whatever. Apparently, I blinked and didn't and, and missed the fact that this was about Survivor Series. That their feud was about Survivor Series. When I remember they were when right before the match they showed a preview of them being uh, yeah. arguing with the, having beef with each other since the day after SummerSlam. So But apparently this match was about Survivor Series. Messed that up. Uh, and then oh. Carmella gets on the mic after the match and goes, "Oh, by the way, I wasn't the one that attacked you at after Survivor Se- uh, at Survivor Series." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that was a thing that they started and then kind of forgot about for all the build up to this match." I'm like what? <laughs> and then she was like, "It was your total, total divas friend," and I'm like, "Why are you bringing that up?" <laughs> Why? Why? Why is that Free important? Pub. That That's important? Why, I'm surprised she didn't go, Total Divas, which is, premieres on the E this week on a new episode. Watch out, Acid. <laughs> give you a hint, they're not on your other show, Total Bellas, which also has a new episode this week. Now, on top of that, she goes, it's Natalia. And we're supposed to be like, <gasps> and the announcer's like, I don't know. I don't know what this means. And I'm like, well, there's a lot of reasons why this was not surprising, and this is not a big payoff at all, and why this storyline is already dead in the water. A lot of those reasons, and they're basically, one, Natalia's already a heel. So it's not exactly out of character for her to have done something like that. Or at least last time I checked, she was a heel. Because I don't know anymore. People just kind of like go in and out of being face and heels sometimes. It's not, and it's just not like committed. They're not. And it's like they. And like sometimes WWE just keeps them in that middle phase of like. Like it's okay. Like they kind of deal with the big show a lot where. Well, there's a difference between being a tweener. Yeah. And so, being indecisive. Uh, okay. That's true. I can agree with that. Uh, first off, Natty's already a heel. Fine. Second off. If she attacked her before Survivor Series, it did nothing. It literally did nothing. Like, Natalia was, like, what, the second or third to get eliminated anyway? So it's not even, like... The the way to properly do this feud is if Nikki gets attacked, and then whoever attacks her go, goes on to win the match. That's the whole reason. That's the whole point. If they still just go about the match as usual, and there's no follow-up, it's then it's like... Why do we care? Why do we care that Natalia assaulted her before the match? It's supposed to be the assumption that if had Nikki Bella been there, they would have won the match. I mean, it's just it it seems very like nothing solid. Honestly, it was nothing solid, and it seemed it wasn't enough for me to care either. So it was just like it was like oh. Okay. Also, if it does end up being Natalia, because they could still end up swerving it to where it's Eva Marie. I don't. It doesn't fit her character, but I guess. But I mean, I guess fine. I was gonna say earlier, if you want Nikki Bella to look like a good wrestler, <laughs> just have her face Eva Marie. No, don't, look, don't, 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 she would don't, look don't, awesome. don't, don't you do it. She will look don't you do awesome. It. No, 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 don't you do that. Don't you do that to me. Awesome. WWE, listen to me. Listen to me. Don't you do that. Okay? Awesome. Don't listen to this man. Actually, this man, speaking of, this man speaking, is a maniac. Speaking he doesn't of, know what he's talking about. Speaking of awesome, what, what I thought was a surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, but a pretty good match, the ladder match for the Intercontinental title, Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz with Maurice at the ringside. That had no outside interference. Right. That she just was there. <laughs> she was, she's just there watching her man. That's it. Watch, like just watching him win the match, and that's pretty great, you know. I, but just some, I always, this is the two wrestlers who I feel, especially, and of course they're on the SmackDown wrestler the roster. The two wrestlers that I feel just are just completely just pushed under the water is Bray and Dolph Ziggler, and it's just this matchup was another example of like, guys, Dolph is great. Like he, yes, he lost the match, and like, but forgetting that he lost the match, Dolph is great. Dolph is awesome. Dolph is, is he's a championship material. God, I mean, I would love to see Bray and Dolph, you know, for on a SmackDown pay-per-view main event. <laughs> Actually, the tag team thing kind of muddies that unless they use the free bird rule. Yeah. Which they true. could. It's that's true, but like it's just I don't know, it's just Dolph Dolph needs something. But I do want I would I think honestly the smart thing to do would have that be next. Yeah, well Dolph and Yeah. 
Well, or the white family in general. Well, it's just what, now that they have, that's the thing. It's like, that's what makes it upset. Now that they have the tag team titles, it's like, in a, a look, like, unless they're going to continue to ignore the tag team division, all they're going to do is just make the tag team titles easily irrelevant. Or, no, because, because this is the problem with current WWE. Because that's what current WWE would do. But, like, there's no reason that that has to happen. They, they could very well have the tag team titles and just be dominant but be dominant across different divisions. Mm. Like, they could defend their tag team titles over here, and then whoever doesn't defend the tag team titles is uh, feuding with the IC champion, or feuding with Ziggler, well, feuding that, with that, Kane, or and whatever. That's, and that's if they, but that's if they continue to put, like you're saying, that they have a new day where they switch out partners, and this is if they continue to push that, if they're saying that Randy... Bray and Luke Harper are tag team champions, but if they're just saying that, well, the the Wyatt family, yeah, is champions. Yeah, well, that's it's is champions. That's our champions. They're champions either way. Um, and it's they like call the cops. Huh? Yeah, they call the cops. The cops are coming. <laughs> the cops are coming to get us. They say that's enough. Cut the video. Um, um, but overall, like I said, I thought the ladder match was just really good. I thought the finish was very good. I thought it was a good decision to keep it on the Miz. Yeah. The match itself. And I thought like I thought good. it was still a good way. Uh, still a good way for the Miz to, even though it's no disqualification, for him to win in a dirty fashion, and keeps heat on him. Yeah. And it, ex- it excuses Dolph yeah. for losing. Yeah. Because it's n- it's understandable now. <laughs> it's totally understandable to not be able to climb a ladder. Unlike what to- happened later on in a ladder. Type match. We're getting there next. Yeah. But the next match that I do want to talk about that I was surprisingly impressed with, surprisingly impressed with, was Baron Corbin versus Kalisto in this chip match. I was. That's not the match I was expecting us to talk about. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, I'll I was, save that reaction for later. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he wasn't coming for that. Well, I'll clap, I'll clap for that. I was quite impressed. It was a good match. Yeah. I, I, you know, I thought it was going to be the. The I, it, it, to me it was set up as the match like okay this is the quick break match you know before we get our two main event matches you know I thought like okay great um it, I was just impressed I was impressed with just some of the things that they were able to do and I think it, I don't know I enjoyed it. this is the first chairs match that I was actually like oh that's what a chairs match is, is probably should be <laughs> yeah but also this was the only match that really felt like. A match worthy to go on a show like TLC. Yeah. This was the one like creative match. It's just like it's, with their stipulation. I think, like you said, like it's it's back to like uh, this. Is, I think that's because they actually show like here's what you could do with the ch- here's what you could do with not just one chair but a bunch of chairs. And I think because I think majority of the matches that we've seen, yeah, they may have the simple finish, the uh, same finish of like having a chair stacked in between to a finisher, call it. But like I think this matchup. They made use of every, almost every single chair that you saw in that area, even the ones hanging up. <laughs> um, you just they used them, and it was just it was just creative. It was nice, and I I enjoy Kalisto when he's with the bigger people because they uh, they make they both make each other look really good. They know how to make and Kalisto know how to make the bigger person the big the big person look like a big person, but the big person also know how to make Kalisto look like this little guy who actually has some on them. You know, and it's great. It's great to watch. Um, with, with that said, WWE, it let let it die. Let this let this feud die. It's they're over. Not, they're not. That's the worst part. They're not going <laughs> to let it die. They're going to give it one more. No. Good, I promise you, they're going to give it one more good match before. Did we ever get that Jack Swagger Baron Corbin match? Oh, Jack Swagger, never heard of him. Um, so they got him wearing a bodysuit now. Because <laughs> kids love bodysuits. He wasn't even a kickoff shot. Like, just, just, yeah, he was nowhere. Jack has to go. He was nowhere. Pat, Jack, and get him. Remember when they tried to make him seem like a big deal? When he was like, I'm on SmackDown Live now. Um, so next. Next. Um, next is our, this is what he's probably was waiting for. The, uh, the women's title match. Um, Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch. And I called it. Yeah. <laughs> about time it's uh, like I think I think you know I think they're doing I'm glad they gave Becky this push because you know you saw how they were pushing Charlotte Sasha and even um, Bailey as well and not as well as Becky even though they kind of went uh, never mind (laughs) yeah yeah, exactly (laughs) but like at least with at least with Becky they were like you know we're going to give you some opportunity but like I think it was about that time we go like okay 
let's let's give another another uh, woman another another superstar a chance to hold this title. Mm -hmm. And I think Alexa Bliss is a good choice. I think Alexa Bliss is a good heel to carry this title at the moment. Too um, bad the crowd forgot there was a match going on. Yeah, not you know um, I have to, it's a little harder comparing that match to the other two matches that fit the TLC film, like, you know, the ladder match and the chairs match. It's like, you can use a ladder and you can use chairs in numerous ways, but like, for like hitting and like having people slam into it. But like with the table match, it's like, that's it. It's like, one, like if, I slam, if I use the table on you, that's the point. I want the match. Like, yes, I want the table, the table match, and yes, to be fair, they could have been more creative with, I mean, there's no rule that says you can't use another weapon. That's so true. there is no disqualification. So they could have been a lot more creative, as well as the Nikki Bella Carmella match could have been a little bit more creative. They only used two weapons in an OEQ match. Come on, but um, they're probably just testing the waters. Yeah, baby um, steps. <laughs> unlike Raw, this is put them in a cell. <laughs> well, you know what? The crazy thing is, the crazy thing for me is that I would not even if they used that match to open the match. I would not have had an issue if they would have made. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch the oh. TLC match. Like I would not have had a problem if there was two TLC matches. I would have been, like, yeah, for some reason WWE just hates having like the same kind of match twice. What? Are we talking about Hell in a Cell? They had three <laughs> Hell in a Cell matches in one night. Three. They opened the show, the middle of the show, and they ended the show with the Hell in a Cell match. But every Hell but, in a, every Hell in a Cell match has at least two to three Hell in a Cell. But, you mean to tell but, me you can't have? Two TLC matches, two, one for the women, one for the men. You can't have two, 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 two. it's just two. I think easily, easily they could have been, the, they could have been the TLC match and either the tag team match or the no disqualification match could have been the table match. That could have been easily solved. That could have been boom shakalaka or something, you know, like that could have been done right there. You can't have two. You know what the, you know what I thought I just had? As to why maybe also the Nikki Bella Carmelo match wasn't as good, it's because we literally just saw Sasha and Charlotte show exactly what you could do with a no DQ <laughs> and have it be an excellent match. But you can't do it with Nikki Bella and Carmelo. Well, I think, and the hard thing too, like at the like while those I think we're talking in general different competitors, like we said, also different stakes on the line, like yeah. you know. <laughs> but also staying with that. You felt the stakes in yeah. that match, and I think maybe that is, to be fair, to play devil's advocate against what I personally feel, that is what was kind of missing from the Becky Alexa match. The stakes just didn't feel that high. It felt more personal between the two, and they could have even told that story. They could have told the story of, you know, it got a little bit too personal between Becky and Alexa, and it made Becky take her eyes off the prize for just a second. And the tables match is the perfect match to have that happen in. I mean, you could have had a similar thing uh, to John Cena and Sheamus. Though I like when it's deliberate, when somebody actually wins the match. <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, I, 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 didn't, I didn't mind the match. But one thing I was going to say is that a table match is really dependent on the crowd. Yeah. It really is, because it's just all tension. If it's last, all teasing. If your last name isn't Dudley, I ain't really trying to watch a table smash with you. So just... But it's like, the whole point of the match is to build drama. Devon! <laughs> I'm sorry. The Devon. I'm sorry, am I Devon in this scenario? <laughs> I'm, usually, I'm, I'm, usually, I'm usually Bubba in any other situation, but touche, touche. I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to cut you off, just had to do the... But... <laughs> You literally, I mean, you're like, you're like, stop! <laughs> uh, because it's all drama. The whole point, a good tables match needs to have a lot of false finishes and a lot of false spots. But if the crowd doesn't care about the false spots, then the match is dead in the water. And to be fair, I didn't think the match was bad. I thought they did the best with what they, what they were given and what they could do. Um, I thought... They actually did it. This match actually did a good job of making Alexa seem like right there with Becky because it's hard. It's hard to going back to what we kind of just alluded to in the Kalisto Baron Corbin match. First off, 
These are female competitors, which are innately not as big as the male competitors. That's just biology. And then you have Alexa, who is tiny and <laughs> who doesn't have, like, the most muscles in the world and isn't really imposing. So I thought this match did a good job of, like, actually kind of playing to her strengths of, like, being a little bit vicious and being smarter because if you watch the ending of that match she actually it's really smart she trips becky with the apron mm -hmm. and that's the whole reason she won that's the whole reason she caught her for the power bomb so i'm like that actually that made me believe in alexa as a champion a little bit more and if they keep doing stuff like that it then separates alexa into her own category the way that edge did with the uh, ultimate opportunist oh. because he's not the biggest or the strongest but he's the smartest so i like that i liked what they did with that match okay. uh final thoughts um we'll see i think we'll see what this right like i think what this rivalry will lead to i think the whole women's division is kind of big question mark now yeah it's like, with like you know i like expect expect a rematch between the two yeah. expect one um I think probably expect one before uh, Roadblock because I know that they like to each show when their pay per view is not coming up they like to at least do like a big thing for their last show before that pay per view. Um, hmm. um, so expect like that match to come if not this week next week. Um, also, you can expect you can expect to see that rematch soon because of that promo that Becky Lynch did after the match. I smell a double turn. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. Especially if you watch the beginning of Talking Smack. Oh. You read like, oh, I think they are kind of testing the waters a little bit on that double turn. Speaking. Uh. Speaking of double turn. <laughs> let's talk about our main. Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not finished. The show is still going on. Let's talk about. The, the double turn of the night in our main event match. It was not a double turn. It wasn't even a turn. It wasn't, it wasn't like out of nowhere. We knew it. We knew it was coming. WWE. We did. You've been on the air for how long? Years upon years upon years. You couldn't make it even a little bit more interesting. This was the most paint by numbers lazy just throw it in because that's what's supposed to happen turn that i've ever seen <laughs> it's terrible he is terrible this angle is terrible and you know what it makes aj look like an idiot Before a lot of that happened, though, I thought it was a pretty good match. <laughs> it was a good match. That's what pisses me off even more. It was a good match, even though I tweeted that. It, I mean, I mean, when this when the match kind of started, I was a little bit like checking my phone and like yeah, it wasn't, kind of just it wasn't. I that's been. The, I, think, I think I think a lot of the matches, um, you know, TLC truthfully, like nothing against like a lot of them were yeah. little slow starts. But like I think, man, we talked about we just talked about earlier how. We hate when they're predictable, but then we hate when they're not predictable. But we hate it when they're predictable. We hate it when they're predictable. It's like, well, it's, it's just, and then now you're telling me that this, that now he gets a title shot on Tuesday against AJ We gotta see this dude fight AJ Styles and then AJ another damn time. And then AJ Styles is gonna win. And then AJ, and then because he ha because he should win. Because then what's gonna happen with AJ Styles after that? It's like who's gonna be next? Because I think the other two competitors that the other two people that I think are worthy enough to go for the title right now, you just gave them the tag team titles. Um, and then there's also Dolph that you're probably still gonna keep him stuck with the Miz. So come on, what's going on WWE? Like there are rumors that it's gonna be Taker. Yeah, I do like those rumors a lot. I mean, I it's nice. It's it like it. There's only one way that I like that match happening. Well, there's two ways. One is the obvious. I want Taker to be healthy. I don't. I don't want him to like force himself back into the uh, costume and then. Uh, all right, I uh, gotta go through the motions again. Like, nah, I don't want that Taker. I only want Taker back if he's a hundred percent to go. 
and because he's get, he's getting in the ring with AJ Styles, quite arguably and very convincingly, arguably the best wrestler wrestling right now, full time. So sure, that's one old. That's one of the only ways I want to see that. I match. mean, easy, but like at the same time, like. Is it easy? Is it easy to just have AJ Styles versus Undertaker Royal Rumble, so that way someone interferes and costs Taker the match? Taker comes back and I don't costs- think that someone's gonna be a someone. That someone's gonna be Mr. John Q. Cena. To, to oh whoa oh to interrupt the match between AJ Styles and Undertaker. If he if he does, I feel like he'd be trying to help Undertaker, but I don't think he would interfere. In fact, I think they're gonna try if Cena comes back. I think they're going to try to throw him in the Royal Rumble again. Turn him heel. Um, <laughs> the fans would hate it. They would hate the fans it. would hate it. The fans would hate it like they hated when Hogan turned heel for NWO. Like for the first couple That's weeks. That's good. For the first couple weeks. Um, and then like they were like, oh, Hogan, you're awesome. Um, <laughs> and then he was like, this was not what I was going for. Right. Um, <laughs> this wasn't the plan. <laughs> he would be. Anyway. If we could just switch. Honestly, truthfully. If we could just switch Dean and Dolph, like Dean go for the Intercontinental and Dolph go for the WWE title. I mean, he did because we because come on, no, we, we let, were, let Dolph oh, breathe. Oh, from, we will all enjoy Dolph versus AJ Styles, but he's WWE gonna title. lose again. That's true, right? <laughs> so that is true. Plus, he's been think about it since SummerSlam, since SummerSlam, Dolph has been in nothing but world like title. Title feuds. Yeah. But like, like, he can take a break. He can feud with somebody a little bit easier. Are we, are, but are you forgetting, like, the almost year or two of him not being in a title feud? Are we saying now that... From well, that's August, when he develop, developed a following. That's was like his hand from August to Nove- to now December. Like, okay, that's enough of Like <laughs> It's like every week, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. That's what we want. We want good things. Dolph, one good thing but no, play. you gotta be fair. You gotta share the wealth. Other people, Baron Corbin, or other people, Apollo Cruz, which I like. I like Apollo Cruz. He deserves more than to be in the freaking kickoff show. The a five on well, five kickoff show to it. Uh. Not even like, um, but but um, otherwise, I think there's some questionable things happening. I think I do think there's a lot of endings to a lot of chapters here. At TLC, which makes me a little happy. I think some feuds are gonna finally sizzle down. It's like some things are gonna go on to life. We got the start of new feuds too. Yeah, you know, I think I'm excited for it. I'm excited for these new things that are about to start now with SmackDown. I think um, I think I'm I'm a little happy now watching their watching their show a little more. Um, I'm excited to see, I'm I'm a little excited to see what they're gonna see with the new Wyatt family. Even though I'm hoping. I'm hoping I hope it all benefits Bray because as much as Orton is my guy, um, it's like I'm hoping good things for Bray. I think you know. I want him to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Don't we all? Don't for we the all. championship, and I want him to win. That's super. I nice. don't care. You dream, you don't care how he wins. Well, anything can happen. In the you know what? No, movie. no. Hold on. You know what? You know what? You know what I want? I want a heel to win a world championship at WrestleMania. Come on. Seth Rollins. I he was not. <laughs> in that match Rain. in that match Rain. he was not the heel. In in thirty one? <laughs> no. He was a tweener, maybe. No, he was the heel. Because everyone was like, God, Roman is gonna win. No. And then his music played and everyone was like, Oh yeah. wait! Oh wait! And I called it. I called that too. WrestleMania I called that too. WrestleMania twenty four when Randy Orton won the championship. Twenty four? We're on thirty three now. I'm, I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> 27 when the Miz won. Um, but I'm talking about to close out the show. Um, I want a heel to close out the 29 show. 29 when John Cena won. He was a, he technically was a heel because <laughs> he wanted the Rock to win. Um, no, they didn't. Not at 29. Yeah, they did. Not at 29. They did want the Rock to win. No. Because they, no. Because they, because they already knew that. They didn't want either of them to win. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted Dolph Ziggler to come and be like, I don't care if it's for the SmackDown title. I'm taking this one. Yes. <laughs> Touché. Forget both the y'all. Touché. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching our recap and listening to, uh, to our opinions. Be sure to check us out next week as we prepare to give you guys some predictions for Roadblock coming up. Right now we only have one match scheduled, um, and that's Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for the WWE title. 
It makes me question, will Roman lose that United States title? We don't know. We'll see. Um, because I think it's silly to, I don't know. I think both titles should at least be on the line. Also, if you're going to put him back in the main event, maybe take that mid-card title off him. Yeah. Because we've learned that lesson before. Because there are... Multiple times. Because there are so many mid-card wrestlers who... They love doing that. They love doing that. They're trying to push Roman, remember? But no, it's not even just Roman. They do that a lot of like putting mid-card champions into a main event storyline. I'm like... Don't you have a championship to defend? Wait, you, Wasn't that like all of the Shield's initial run? Was Dean Ambrose just holding this paperweight belt like, and then, and then, hey, yeah, I'm the champion. Right. If anything, if they're gonna, if they do, they're gonna break the Shield up a month after that. They should have had him keep the title. I'm like, come on, that would have been a great Seth and Dean feel. But you know what? I not, I'm not running WWE. One day I'm gonna run my own wrestling company. Yeah. So I said it. You heard me say it. And I'll book it. There we go. We're, we're, we're gonna, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be awesome. Thank you all so much for watching Did us. You just end this video on a trump. No, <laughs> because the video is still going on. Uh, thank you all so much. Be sure to check us out next week in our videos. Uh, thanks again. First of all, thanks again to all of our friends and whatnot for sharing our last video. Um, be sure to share this video. As you see, it's much shorter than the last one. But thank you guys so much again. Um, I'm Robbie Miles. I'm TJT. Thank you. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> you just had to, didn't you? Uh, it, it, it lets you know. It lets you know what to cut. <laughs>